Hey everyone. So today let's solve um, Symphonus from Vulnerable Hub. I know it has been a while since we haven't solved any Vulnerable Hub from uh, any sorry any Vulnerable Machine from Vulnerable Hub. But you know it's live, and I've been so busy recently. So let's skip that and get down to business. So first thing first, as you can see, I downloaded the machine from Vulnerable Hub run the machine on VMware and getting the network settings all right as you can see from VM settings my settings over here as you can see uh, network adapter make sure to use either NAT or bridged all right on both machines uh, okay so go back to my attacking machine as you can see here my IP address is 192.168.94.129 okay and I'm going to go through the discovery and scanning process very quickly because the purpose of this machine is rather some kind of, not new concept, of course, it's not new concept, but it's kind of the purpose of this machine I want to show you is how to poison mail log files, okay? So you have, if you have a mail server running on your machine or your client's machine, obviously, uh, they're going to have mail server open, okay, as a cloud or on the cloud or local mail server, there will be a log file. Okay, this log file can be poisoned if there is no security measures uh, in place. Okay, to folder all of the uh, incoming emails or outgoing uh, emails, okay? So let's get down to this very quickly. So I issued this command over here to scan the parameter or scan the host on my network. Obviously, you or obviously you can scan your target within the same network since this is like friend testing, you know. Uh, okay, so after that, I found out that my IP address or the victim. Let's not say, let's forget about the word victim, okay? Because we are not attacking anyone. Let's say the target um, host, okay? So it's more flexible, you know, target host. In real world scenarios, you would say the client host or the client machine. These terms you should know, okay? Just don't use the victim machine if you are doing pen testing for any client. Let's use the client host, the client endpoint, whatever, okay? So the target, sorry. <laughs> so uh, the host IP that I'm trying to test is 94.137. Obviously, my friend in map will scan this host for all the open boards and the associated services running on these ports. So I used the service aggressive all ports and my target, uh, the host, the host IBM trying to scan. So as you can see, we have SSH open, we have SMTP, obviously we have mail server running and we have NetBIOS Fineshare Samba. Um, and these are the results or the uh, output from running the aggressive or opting for the aggressive uh, option in Nmap, as you can see the operating systems, other details that might become in, might be um, of interest for us. So okay, I'm gonna skip that and go back here. So uh, so you see we have main server open 25, and we have file share on Samba. And we have the HTTP port. Okay, so we have many um, attack vectors or many open ports. So if I browse um, 6894, yep, typo. Okay, so here's the, this. I don't know, some kind of. Actually, I have seen this kind of. Um, drawings many times, but so far I don't know what what does it mean. <laughs> so, you know, off topic. If you know, guys, what does that mean? Something something that has to do with history or cultures. I don't know. Okay, so this is what the web server looks like or the web page looks like. So let's skip that. I know, just some people might might say, okay, run directory. Uh, Brute forcing, whatever. But you know, guys, we have. If you if you wanna do testing, 
we can stay like for long hours do testing, but I'm trying just to make this quick. Okay. So the next step is scanning the file share. How do you scan file share on Samba? You can use enumeration for Linux. You're gonna put in for Linux the host IP address and your own inner. Okay. And the piece of information that uh, is that's important for us here. Okay. So as you can see, it says there's the shared the shared information on this host. As you can see, I have multiple chairs, among which are Anonymous and Helios. Okay. That's the information that you need to take care of. Okay, so let's try to connect with these shares and find out what is inside. So SMB client to connect to shares. Obviously, when I connect to anonymous share, I don't need to input username or password. Okay, the password. Okay, so let's see what we have. So I have attention text file. So I can run this using more. Up. Uh, okay, so as you can see here, there's a hint about passwords. Obviously, you're gonna in, you're not going to see this in real uh, real world testing. Okay, just like some kind of hints, CTF um, stuff. Just I don't like, but you know, we need to do that in order to harvest the other benefits of the challenge. So you need, you see here, there are three passwords that's saying you need to use these passwords, okay, in order to uh, commit the challenge. Let's quit. And if you grab the query password, okay, query is the password that you're, you're going to need to use, okay, for accessing the other shares. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm not placing um, too much focus on this kind of stuff during a challenge or during testing because it's, I mean, near non-relevant when you do real testing, okay? So now let's uh, exit, yeah? And connect to Helios. Uh, here, uh, I have to input username because username is required here, which is uh, Helios, and the password is, which we found previously in the when when uh, enumerating anonymous share, which is query. Okay, so now I have access to Helios share. Let's see what we have. Okay, we have a research and Tudo. The file that we need to open is Tudo. Yeah. Okay. So here you can see stuff i don't know and it says work on this okay so long story short you can you need to grab this copy that and use it to access wordpress the wordpress web page so let's go back to my page weird page here enter oh okay So it's loading, and you see here, Symphonus local. So I, I think I need to add this. Okay, I forgot to add this to host file. Uh, okay, let's see what we have. Okay, so here WordPress website, as you can see. Uh, okay, forget about adding this to the host file. Let's skip that. For a moment. Okay, so WordPress site next step is scanning the WordPress for vulnerabilities. Okay, that will be scan. Paste. And enumerate everything. Oops, what happened here? Uh, 
I think we had some typo over here. Yep. Huh. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see this whole side stuff. Uh, let's let me remove these entries. And let's put Symphonus oh. Okay Oh my gosh I think we need to clear the cache for uh, this one? Let's do it. What is this over? What's happening over here? Clearing. Suggest that I have run this scan before, which is correct, but it shouldn't have stored this in cache so quick. I don't know. And I'm wondering why the page loads so weird like this. Oh, so it says we need to remove all the files in the .cache browser, which is okay. CD there share we scan. So we have cache. All right. So let's run the scan again. Okay, so let's now update the WB scan and able to get. Okay, let's forget about the update for the moment. So it seems that it was like caching problem. So now it's beginning to find out what's happening with WordPress and how we can find our way in. Okay, so let's find what we have. As you can see here, we have we found three plugins. Axmit doesn't have anything. Mail master. Local file inclusion. This is the one that you need to work with. Obviously, we have other 
for nebulities, SQL injection, and we have local file inclusion for site editor. We might get into this after getting down from the first vulnerability. As you can see, we have the unauthenticated, unauthenticated local file inclusion, and we have the relative exploit. So let's browse to this. Let's see how we can exploit that. Okay. So the file inclusion vulnerability allow, okay, I know that. So let's say this looks as perfect a place to try for LFI if an attacker is lucky enough. Wow. Okay. So typically we need to create this. Okay. So as you can see, the when you browse to the affected server or the affected address, okay, through the directory of the vulnerable plugin and you inject um, the target file that you need to browse to through the parameter or the vulnerable parameter, which is PL, you're going to end up viewing the content of the sensitive file. Okay. So obviously, the solution to that, if you are a security professional, is to update the plugin. Okay. So don't over underestimate the importance of maintaining an up-to-date WordPress website. Okay. I mean, it might be one single plugin that could take down this site, okay, by being like out, out, outdated, out of date. So make sure to update all of your plugins. And if a plugin doesn't have an update and it's vulnerable, and you're going to know if it is vulnerable or not by doing the constant research. If you're a security professional or you're doing um, or responsible for the security of multiple WordPress websites or web servers or whatever. You're gonna, you need to uh, be on the lookout for all of the updates from the manufacturers or the developers of the plugins you, you are abusing. You are uh, abusing, sorry, you are using, okay? So just, I mean, if a plugin doesn't have an update, just disable it, okay? If it has a vulnerability, disable the plugin until the developers release an update for that, okay? That's the solution for these kind of vulnerabilities. Okay, so let's grab that. Uh, copy. Let's see what it looks like to exploit that. Oh, okay. So over here, I'm gonna replace that with my server. And here, HTTP. Mm, okay. Let's see. All right, so I think mm. oh, the same. So what's wrong here? What's wrong? Yes, you found it, guys, which is this, this goddamn thing. <laughs> I need to put this here. Yeah. Okay, here it is. So we have successfully exploited local file inclusion vulnerability in the plugin main master. What does that mean is now we can Access rise sensitive files on the host, uh, the, the, the host that we are testing, okay? Like etc password, whatever. I'm not gonna run this test right now, but that's the um, election of local file inclusion accessing sensitive files on the local system. Now, how can we use this to establish remote um, connection? Okay, now, now. As you can see, as you remember, we have some kind of SMTP server running on the host, okay? Now, this SMTP server, okay, is running to receive and send an email, sorry, an email, okay, like all emails, right? So, which apparently, it doesn't seem we have a chance to establish a remote connection right now. We need to dig more 
and dig deep down to, uh, using directory, uh, uh, sorry, directory brute forcing to find some kind of directory here and there, and then uh, establish that remote connection by finding something unusual, you know. But the mail server is something for a place that you need to get your hands dirty in how. So there's that um, concept which is called SMTP file or log file poisoning. Okay, which means that and let me explain that by connecting to the SMTP server. So let's clear this. Now let's connect to that SMTP server by using telnet. The address and the port 25. Okay, now in order to interact with this, with, with this server, we need to we need two, uh, three, not two, three, yeah, three, three, uh, let's say parameters the send, receive, and the data. Okay, so your first parameter or your first line would be mail from defining the sender. So let's put arbitrary name. My name, for example. Okay, now I have defined the the sender. Now I need to define the recipient. R C E T two. Okay, now here's the thing. Uh, SMT file poisoning happens when uh, an attacker, or let's say white attacker, or let's say tester, injects malicious code in the recipient field which is here, which is the field I am trying to define here right now. We either put malicious code in the recipient field, okay, or we put the malicious code inside or within the body field, okay, which is the message that, that will be sent to the receiver, okay? So you have two places to work with, the recipient and the body. Why? Because the log file will look all of the interaction that happened between the sender and the receiver, including the body and the recipient. And obviously, when you put malicious code in the recipient field or in the body field, this malicious code will be executed in the log file whenever you run this log file or whenever you browse through this file or whenever you open this file, the malicious code that has been injected in the recipient or the body field will be run. Now, the solution to that is to do some kind of filtering, you know, so they define that there are certain characters, okay, are to be blocked uh, whenever someone is trying to send or receive an email using your SMTP server, okay, so the log file will not store any, some kind of uh, blacklisted black characters, okay, so you need to implement input filtering in your mail server, not allowing certain characters to be inputs while writing an email. That's your solution to this, okay? So let's now define the recipient, okay? Actually, uh, for this tutorial, the exploit or the, 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 the developer or the mail server actually is filtering the recipient field, okay? So if I try to put some kind of malicious code uh, let me try put some PHP one-liner or PHP um, code execution one-liner, PHP system. Uh, so let's put get over here, CMD, yeah. Nope. Uh, after that, we're gonna close that. Okay, now this is a piece of malicious code that if, uh, if, we, if, we, if we could be able to input that without the filtering process, okay, now if you browse the, the, the mail, the, the log file, and we use the parameter, which is CMT over here, we can let the mail, let, let, let the log file execute whatever we define using the CMT parameter, okay, that's it. That's the concept behind this. So for this machine, okay, if you input this malicious code in the recipient field, it will not work. Okay, rather you will input this in the body field. Okay. Remove that. 
Then you define the recipient to be the user, okay, which is Helios. And you need to make sure that you define this as a recipient, okay? Because this is the only username in the system after animals. Helios. Okay, now we are on to input the body field. Let's put data to define that we need to input the body field or the message that we are trying to send. Now let's paste that. Okay, now obviously this is the message that will be sent to the recipient, okay, and will be stored in the log file. Okay, and whenever we browse to this log file, this will be executed. Okay, now enter and we put dot or point to tell the mail server that we, uh, we, we just finished, okay, sending the message. Enter. Now, another option is to we can do is instead of input some this one over here you can put your reverse php shell okay so let's do that so you can use php reverse shell from monkey pentest monkey <laughs> monkey from pentesting monkey php reverse reserve reverse pentest monkey GitHub, GitHub, okay. Yeah, weird, I know. So obviously you're gonna copy that, okay, the PHP reverse shell, and you're gonna paste this instead of that. Point, enter, you're ready, okay. Now don't forget to uh, change the IP and port with your IP and port that you are using for your machine, testing machine. Okay, let's now open the center. For force. Now, what we're gonna need is, now we go to our browser. Okay, now instead of this guy over here, uh, we need to identify the path. As I understand, so instead of PL, I'm gonna browse to the mail or the log file, which is var mail and the username, alias. Or, 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 not for this challenge, or not for this challenge, in general, you might need to access var, var, sorry, var, var mail, mail.log, all right? And oh. uh, actually, sometimes my keyboard has five languages, so that's why sometimes I get confused with the characters. Okay, let's forget about this. <laughs> Let me, uh, yeah, okay, so var main log and you have to put, um, let me, I don't know why it's the, the and character, the ampersand, I can't get the ampersand. And CMD equal, you can put like NC, which is net cut, okay, minus E, bin, dash, IP port, but this will not work for this challenge, okay? Actually, because the main log, the poison main log, or the main log file is not this. The poison log file is the file named under the username police. This is for this challenge. But in real testing, you might end up using this path. So let's go back. Var uh, mail. Uh, 
I think I need to uh, after that I need to put the ampersand. Yep, and then my parameter is CMD. Okay, now let's put the netcat. My IP address, the attacking machine, and the port. Let's see what happened. So obviously we got the reversal back to our machine over here. Now let's grab uh, the let's spawn TTY shell using Python. Python 3, I hope this uninstalled on the machine. I forgot actually whether it's uninstalled or not. It's after that, we need to QTY, uh, not spawn. And then yeah. Okay, what's the next step, guys? The next step is finding a binary file that had the, the SUID set. Okay, which means that this file can run under root privilege. Okay, now find under the all under the uh, everything we need to find in all directories. Okay, whether we have u equal s type file. Hmm. Obviously, I want these are all normal files, normal binaries. The abnormal one is this one. Okay, op status check. So let's try find out what is that. So sixty-four bit um, LSP. Yeah, typically, I mean binary file that runs on sixty-four bit systems. I have the SEO ID. Okay, next, what we need to find is how can we use this file to have root privileges? Okay, so let's run that. Okay, so when you run the file, you receive kind of HTTP response, which means that the file, I mean, just tries to curl something, you know, just browsing to something. So let's use strings to find what's happening inside. There it is. Yeah, okay. So strings reveals these footprints. So here curl, okay, parameter minus i, HTTP local host. So you see, it's just browsing to local host. Now, how can we, I mean, I mean, how can we use that? Or how can we use this file or binary to obtain root permissions? Okay. So that's how we, we're going to, we're going to use a technique, Linux privilege escalation technique, which revolves around injecting the path variable, okay? So obviously if we echo the path, we have the regular path over here, okay? And as you can see in Linux, we have absolute path and we have the relative path. The absolute path is like this, okay? The relative path, the path, sorry, relative path is like, you know, just the binary that you have, okay? So we need to create a binary, okay, that has the same name as curl. We're gonna go to rogue, rogue curl, okay, or the fake one. Now this binary would have um, some kind of shell, okay, that if run would run as root, okay. Now we will put that curl file in a directory, and then we will have this directory as a path. 
inject this directory as path variable. So whenever we run status check, instead of running the actual curl, it's going to run the curl that we have created in the directory that has been exported as path and the path, var path variable. Okay. So how can we do this? Let's go to temp. Obviously, temp is the only directory that we trust. We have root permissions, uh, sorry, uh, write and read permissions. Ls, yeah, I have curl before. Let me remove that. Okay. So let's echo. So if you have two options, being sh, which is the one that works, but if you would bash, it will, not, it will not give you root permissions for reasons that I cannot figure out for this machine. So I'm going to export that to curl, create our own curl, which would spawn the shell upon running the status check. Now give our own curl all the permissions, all the luxury to have. Okay. Now next we're gonna sorry, export the directory temp to be path variable for curl. So obviously when you're running curl, it's gonna run the curl in the temp directory first, which is the heart of Linux privilege escalation using path injection. So export path equal temp. Okay, and then we append the rest of the path. So obviously we can, oh, you can change whatever directory you need to export. Okay, just in our case it's temp. Now let's make sure it's, no, not, every, not everything is correct actually. We forgot to put the dollar sign. <laughs> if I didn't put the trouble sign, if the uh, dollar sign it would get us in trouble. Okay, so let's make sure the path is correct. Echo path. So you see here, it's the our own directory is the first directory that would be um, uh, would be encountered. Okay, when running curl or any other binary. In your regular Linux or protected Linux environment, you're not allowed to export any directory you have, any directory you like to the path uh, variables, okay? So obviously all the files in a protected Linux system are run through the absolute, uh, the absolute path variable, not the relative one. Don't use relative uh, like path variables for your binaries, okay? Just use the absolute ones. So make sure every file you have, or every file that has this set UID, okay? Of course, you are a sysadmin. You need to make some of the files have this set UID bit, you know? Because some files need to run as root, but I mean, the, regular, the, the, the other users on the system don't need to be root, okay? So just give the file root permissions or set UID in order for this file to run in a privileged mode for the regular users. Okay, but this file that has a set UID bit um, has the privilege to run as root, but if misused, okay, will compromise your system, as you can see here, as we are uh, doing right now. So make sure all the files or the binaries that have the SUID set are all running through the absolute path variables, okay? So, next is, uh, what, yeah. So let's run the status check now. Okay, so status check has run the shell over here. Where the curl, our curl, obviously, actually, because the result or the output is shell. Okay, not curl, regular curl output. So now we are um, sure that the injection works. So id cd root. Okay, now we got root permissions on this machine and the machine is done. Okay, of course, I'm not interested in viewing the flag. I'm just interested in teaching you the concepts behind every machine, you know. So that's all about this. I hope you guys learned. <coughs> 
the about the SMTP log phi poisoning and about the Linux privilege escalation using the path variable and how to deal with both in a secure environment. Okay. So thank you guys and see you in the next video.